Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Ray, and today we're going to talk about co-functions and special angles. I am going to be using special right triangles in this video, so if you're not familiar with those, or if you just need to brush up on the topic, take a look at the description. I will put a link to a video that will take you through special right triangles. So if you recall the way special right triangles worked, there were two kinds. There's the 45-90 special right triangle, and there's the 30-60-90 special right triangle. These come from taking half of a square, in the case of the 45-90, or half of an equilateral triangle, in the case of the 30-60-90. And what's important to us about these triangles is that they always follow a specific pattern. In the 45-90 triangle, whatever the length of the legs are, which of course has to be the same, the hypotenuse is always going to be that number times the square root of 2. In the 30, 60, 90 triangle, whatever the length of the side across from the 30 is, so I'll call that x, the hypotenuse is always double that number, and the other side, the one across from the 60, is always that number times the square root of 3. We're going to use these two special right triangles to figure out what the sine, cosine, and tangent are of the three special angles, 30, 45, and 60. The reason we talk about these angles in particular is because those are the three angles you will find in the 45-90 and the 30-60-90 triangle together. Of course, with modern computers and calculators, we can figure out the sine, the cosine, and the tangent for any angle that we want, but these are the three angles that we were able to write down an exact value for without a calculator, without a computer, and for quite some time now. So these are really handy when we're working with trigonometry. The sine, cosine, tangent of 30, 45, and 60 are some values that you're going to want to know by heart eventually. Let's start with the 45 because that's the simplest triangle, just the isosceles right triangle. Now we know that the pattern is whatever the legs are, the hypotenuse will be that times the square root of 2. So let's pick a nice easy value for the legs. What if we make them 1? Then the hypotenuse would be 1 times the square root of 2, which is to say just the square root of 2. Now of course this is just one specific 45-90 right triangle, but because sine, cosine, and tangent are all ratios, these ratios are going to be the same for any larger or smaller version of this 45-90 triangle. Let's choose this angle here to focus on, that's a 45 degree angle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so if we look across from it we would see the number 1, and the hypotenuse is the square root of 2. So that means that the sine of 45 is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2. If you remember from algebra, we really don't like radicals in the denominators of a fraction. We're not going to get into why in this video, but we're going to quickly recall how to deal with that. If I want to get rid of a radical, the only way to really do that is to multiply it by itself. In other words, to square that radical. So I need to multiply the denominator by a radical too. But I can only do that if I also multiply the numerator by radical 2, because what I'm really multiplying here is 1. And when I multiply by 1, it doesn't change the number I started with. In the numerator, I have 1 times the square root of 2 which is just the square root of 2. In the denominator, I have radical 2 times itself, which is 2. And that is how we typically write the sine of 45 as the square root of 2 over 2. This process, by the way, is called rationalizing a denominator. And you should have seen this happen many times in algebra. Now, the cosine of 45 is going to be the same thing. Because if we go to the triangle, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, the hypotenuse hasn't changed, but the adjacent side is also 1 in this triangle. So this is also the cosine of 45. Tangent, remember, is opposite over adjacent. So if we go back to the triangle one more time, the opposite side is 1, the adjacent side is 1. So opposite over adjacent is 1 over 1, which is, of course, just 1. And there are the values for sine, cosine, and tangent of 45 degrees. What's important about these values is that these are exact values. If I were to ask my calculator what the sine of 45 is, it will tell me approximately 0.707106781212. But that is only an approximation. The exact value of the sine of 45 is the square root of 2 divided by 2. In order to figure out the values for the sine of 30 or 60, we're going to need to go to the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Let's begin with 30, and we look across from it. Whatever this side is, we know from the pattern that the hypotenuse will be double that length, and this side is going to be this side times the square root of 3. So a nice length to choose here would be across from the 30. Let's make that a 1, which would make the hypotenuse double it, or 2. And the remaining side would be 1 times the square root of 3, or simply the square root of 3. Now the sine of 30 is opposite over hypotenuse. So if we go opposite 1 over hypotenuse 2, we get that the sine of 30 is 1 half. Cosine of 30 is adjacent over hypotenuse. So here's the 30 again. Adjacent is radical 3. Hypotenuse is 2. So we get the square root of 3 divided by 2. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So across from 30 is 1. Adjacent is radical 3. That means that the tangent of 30 is actually 1 over the square root of 3. 
There's another radical in the denominator. We don't like to have that in mathematics, so I'm going to rationalize that denominator, just as I did before. Since I have a square root of three, I need to multiply it by itself to get rid of that radical. But if I multiply the denominator by rad three, I need to also multiply the numerator by rad three. This gives me a value of radical three divided by three. Let's now bring our attention to the angle 60. So here's our 60 degree angle. For the sine, we need the opposite over hypotenuse. So that's rad three over two. For the cosine, we're going to need the adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's one over two or one half. And for the tangent of 60, we need the opposite divided by the adjacent. That's radical three divided by one or simply the square root of three. There you have the sine, cosine, and tangent of 30, 45, and 60, also known as these special angles in trigonometry. Once again, these nine values are all exact values. There's absolutely no rounding here. There's actually a pretty interesting pattern you may have started to notice here, and it pertains to the other topic we're gonna to talk about in this video. So let me just point something out here. If you look here, the sine of 30 ends up being exactly the same as the cosine of 60. Had you noticed that? Also, the cosine of 30 is exactly the same as the sine of 60. Pretty interesting. There's something very important happening here that we're going to come back to in just a moment. But first, I just want to show you one simple application of how you could use these values to solve a problem. So here we have an equilateral triangle, and we're being told that the length of the sides is 12. They want to know the area of this triangle. A good way to start would be to drop an altitude into this triangle, which means I've just split my equilateral triangle up into two 30, 60, 90 triangles. This was one of the original angles, 60. This is another one of the original angles here, 60, which means that up here, these are both gonna be 30, right? So this is our 30, 60, 90. Since the sides of the original triangle were all 12, we know that that would have to be 12. These would both have to be six, right? Because this is going to be a midpoint here since we have the symmetry of the equilateral triangle. And then if across from the 30 is a six, the hypotenuse is double. And this other side, which is the height, is going to be six times the square root of three. So if we remember that the formula for the area of a triangle is one half its base times its height, then we can figure out the area of this big triangle by simply plugging in one half the base times the height, which is that six radical three, and we get 36 times the square root of three. Let's shift gears a little bit and look at a problem like this. What if I asked you to solve for x given that the sine of five x was equal to the cosine of six x minus 20? Take a minute and really think about what you would be able to do here. Many students would have the inclination to set 5x equal to 6x minus 20, but that's kind of a last resort, right? And we have two expressions and we're not sure what to do. We typically set them equal to each other. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's not. A clue to how we can solve this problem is actually back in the chart we were looking at over here. So remember I said that there was this pattern that we're going to come back to later in the video? Here is where we want to think about that pattern. 30 and 60 have the property that they add up to 90 degrees. So in order to understand how to solve this question, we're first going to want to think about why it's called cosine in the first place. There's sine and there's cosine. Well, what does that co in cosine stand for? It stands for the complement's sign cosine is a contraction. Let's remember what a complement is in geometry. So angle A over here and angle B up here, these are complementary angles. Complementary angles are angles that sum to 90 degrees. Since this is a right triangle, these two angles always have to sum to 90 degrees because the other 90 degrees is going to be taken up by this right angle here. This is the reason that we always were so careful to work with right triangles when we first introduced sine, cosine, and tangent. Let's think about the sine of angle A in very general terms here. The sine of angle A is going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. I don't have any numbers for the opposite or the hypotenuse side in this triangle, so I'm simply going to use the sides themselves. The sine of angle A is equal to BC over AB. Can you think of another trigonometric function that would have the same value, BC over AB, in this triangle? Well, it's the cosine of B, isn't it? Angle B is over here in the triangle, and the adjacent side is BC. So when you go from angle A to angle B, the hypotenuse doesn't change but the side that is opposite from angle A is always going to be the side that's adjacent to angle B. So it has to be true that the sine of angle A is equal to the cosine of angle B. And it doesn't matter what these two angles are as long as they're in a right triangle. Let's look at the cosine of angle A. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cosine of angle A is adjacent AC over hypotenuse AB. Can you think of another trigonometric ratio in this triangle that would also be AC over AB? Certainly, that's the sine of angle B. Angle B 
Across from it, the opposite side is AC. So the sine of B has to be the same as the cosine of A because the side that was adjacent to A is necessarily opposite from B. As long as angle A and B are complements, then the sine of A has to be the cosine of B, and the cosine of A has to be the sine of B. This is true because they can be placed into the same triangle. Let's take a look back at that problem we had a moment ago now. If we had that the sine of 5x is equal to the cosine of 6x minus 20, that is saying that the sine of angle A is equal to the cosine of angle B. As long as it's true that angle A and B can be placed into the same right triangle, then this is of course true that the sine of A is equal to the cosine of B. One way for this to be true is if A plus B equals 90, which means that 5x plus 6x minus 20 equals 90, which means 11x minus 20 equals 90, and solving for x we get x equal to 10. A would be 5 times 10, which is 50 and b would be 6 times 10, 60, minus 20, which is 40. Notice that 50 and 40 are complements, and that's what's driving the solution to this problem. Another way that you'll see this idea come up a lot, which expression is always equivalent to sine of x when x is between 0 and 90? By telling us that x is between 0 and 90, they're letting us know that x will fit inside of a right triangle. In other words, there's room for a right angle, and then x, and then some other angle over here, which would be the complement of x. What's the angle that would fit into this triangle with x? Well, it's 90 minus whatever x is, right? If x was 20, 90 minus 20 would be 70, and that would be the remaining angle of the triangle. If x was 80, 90 minus 80 would be 10, and that would be the remaining angle of the triangle. So the sine of x, which is to say this side over the hypotenuse, is definitely equal to the cosine of this angle, which is 90 minus x. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, feel free to leave a comment below, and as always, have a great day.